David Paul, uh, your Commercial and Procurement Director at the Highways England. Right. Thanks for joining us here at the uh, Highways UK event. Um, now, we talked a lot about a customer-focused Highways England or customer-focused network. So what difference does that really make to your supply chain? Okay, um, what we're trying to do uh, within our performance metrics, we have a lot of those are pointed towards customer in terms of the service that we deliver and what that experience mm -hmm. is like on our network. What we need to do is provide ways for our supply chain to bring forward innovations that positively impact customer service. Um, so just a small example, an example that I mentioned during my, uh, my talk uh, was about white lining. Mm -hmm. uh, road markings, um, whether that's white lines or cat size, are really important in terms of customer experience. Mm -hmm. Our post bag tells us that, and, uh, and the phone calls that we receive are, uh, tell us that too. Yeah. Previously, we've managed that as a sub-tier of pavements, mm -hmm. Whereas actually, in terms of value to our customer, we need mm -hmm. to bring that forward. That's just an example yeah. where having direct relationships with parts of the supply mm -hmm. chain that deliver real value in terms of customer. So it's making, that, making that more of a priority in, in your procurement Yeah, it's process. making it more of a priority. It's bringing it forward so mm -hmm. that innovations can yeah. come, come forward. Um, White Line is just one example yeah. in terms of customer mm -hmm. communications, customer information. They're all areas where we but need so to do that. In the big picture of what uh, this government is trying to achieve, it's got huge targets around productivity, uh, huge targets around efficiency. Um, yep. So it's how does the Highways England set up now, obviously you've changed from the Highways Agency, how yep. does that help you to, to actually hit those targets? What we've been able to do because of the longer term funding settlement is go to market with a bigger framework, mm -hmm. um, collaborative delivery framework, it's a five billion pound framework, it's much bigger. It allows our supply chain to invest in terms of their own capabilities yeah. over a longer term period mm -hmm. with more certainty of work. Yeah. Um, now that in itself will drive efficiencies, but we also need to look at the specifications, the way that we deliver projects in order to drive those um, efficiencies too. An example of that um, is just around pavements delivery. Mm -hmm. So we've been working really, really hard to, to improve the available working window when we're out on the network um, putting in new pavements. Do you think they'll require your supply chain to bring you new skills, perhaps? In terms of the skills agenda, there's two issues. We will need new skills and we will need more skilled people. Right. It's a bigger programme and in terms of capacity, mm -hmm. that is a challenge. Um, it's a challenge across many areas um, of industry. And we're working as, as, as part of a broader government yeah. program mm -hmm. to focus on apprentices yeah. and drawing people into the industry. We want to talk about new skills, I suppose, there's been a lot of talk over this conference about yeah. the use of technology. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of your, your traditional supply chain perhaps doesn't have those. Is that a concern? Is that? I think we're in a transition period. When you look mm -hmm. at our supply chain, um, we've been building smart motorways um, you know, for a number of years mm -hmm. and the suppliers involved in that have stepped up and delivered the physical assets as well as the technology yeah. assets and most difficult of all, the integration yeah. between the physical and, and, and the back office and the technology assets on road. So I think our supply chains started that journey, mm -hmm. but I think it's absolutely clear when you look at our future program mm -hmm. that we will need to do far more of that. Yeah. And part of it will be with our tier one suppliers um, and part of it will be with closer supply chain management mm -hmm. with other suppliers involved currently where we need deeper relationships. Presumably you also look across at other sectors, so yeah. water or energy, and there's a big move in those particular sectors towards uh, a whole life value, a totex uh, yeah. scenario. Is that is that something you're trying to uh, emulate? Uh, yes, uh, it is. The part of our license requirement um, mm -hmm. requires us to look at the whole life cost um, scenario. Clearly in our industry, mm -hmm. there's issues of affordability that have to be factored into that mm -hmm. um, as well. But when you look at things like um, concrete barriers that we do, mm -hmm. um, that's our default posi uh, position when we, um, uh, when we replace um, metal barriers. And for many areas, that's a great whole life uh, cost solution and it's also good for safety too. Yeah. There are other areas of portfolio where we have to factor that in, mm -hmm. um, take the right balance between whole life cost, safety and affordability. Mm -hmm. David, you've got a lot of work to do over the next uh, few years. So uh, thanks for talking to us today. Um, good luck with it all. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks.